From prehistoric times to the early 19th century, ancient or contemporary civilizations have all adopted defensive measures at some point. Attacking and seeking protection have always been two essential characteristics of human society. Since its inception, this has had a tremendous impact on architecture. The building of protective city walls and hidden tunnels and passageways characterize ancient and medieval architecture. What is the history of the secret locations? How many mysteries and secrets are hiding under these underground sites? Which people once lived there and why? Let's find out together! Meshiate, the hidden site. Midia, Turkey has such a rich history that it functions almost as an open-air museum. Archaeologists have unearthed a new history under the historic town's foundations, the world's biggest underground metropolis. According to ancient origins, Midyat environmentalists uncovered this vast underground cavern by chance while cleaning the town's litany of antique streets and structures. They discovered a concealed cave entrance, then a strange route that took them to a massive structure that awed researchers. With hundreds of tunnels and 49 chambers uncovered, the area has been called Meshiate, which translates to City of Caves. Archaeologists discovered artifacts from the 2nd and 3rd centuries CE, worship altars, storage silos, and water wells linking corridors and rooms of residences during the excavation operation. The most astounding aspect is that historians estimate they have only found 3% of the city's overall extent. The rediscovered limestone metropolis uncovered under this historic town, according to Tarkan, director of the Martin Museum and the project's chief digger, has likely lain unchanged for the previous 1900 years. He estimates that the enormous site was previously home to 70,000 people. Petra, a majestic city carved into rock. Petra, famous for its appearance in the film Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, is an ancient caravan city hidden in the highlands of southern Jordan. The site has been occupied since antiquity. However, it reached its pinnacle some 2,000 years ago when the ancient Nabataeans carved the surrounding sandstone slopes into a spectacular array of tombs, banquet halls, and temples. al Khazne, or the Treasury, is one of the most beautiful structures with an elaborate facade that runs 130 feet up a rock face. Petra may have once housed 20,000 people, but was abandoned about the 7th century AD and was unknown to Europeans until the 1800s. Excavations at the site still are occurring today, and most of its remains are considered underground. The Petra Archaeological Park was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1985, and it was selected as one of the world's new Seven Wonders in 2007. The Nabataeans emerged as a unique civilization and political entity during the 4th and 2nd centuries BCE. Their monarchy centered upon a trade network that gave them tremendous riches and powers across the ancient world. They were considered one of the most gifted peoples of the ancient world by one historian, and their eerily gorgeous rock-carved capital was Petra. Petra became the primary center of the Nabataeans, who were used to living in desolate deserts and were incredibly skilled in rainwater collection, agriculture, and stone carving. The Sikh Gorge, which is three-quarters of a mile long and was formed by a fault split apart by tectonic plates and scoured smooth by water, provides access to the city. Lila Bella In the Ethiopian town of Lila Bella, a devoted monarch ordered the building 11 striking Christian churches in the 12th century AD. All churches in this New Jerusalem were hewn from the volcanic rock under the Earth's surface and then hollowed out, giving them the illusion of having sprouted out of the ground. This New Jerusalem is unique for being constructed from the top down. The Church of St. George, designed like a cross and carved out of a single, massive block of stone in a hole 100 feet deep, is the most famous structure in the area. The remainder of the complex was subsequently linked to it by a network of underground tunnels, hidden caverns, and catacombs. Lila Bella's construction is said to have taken barely 24 years, although many historians think it was finished over many centuries. The hamlet is now revered by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, and up to 100,000 people still go there each year to see its underground temples. Derinkuyu Derinkuyu is an old subterranean city in Turkey in the Cappadocia province of Nevshihir. This astonishing archaeological find was discovered by accident in 1963 by a resident while repairing his home. 
During the restorations, he found a mysterious passage, a complex labyrinth of caverns and tunnels separated into various levels that wandered over 85 meters down in the Earth's bowels. This homeowner discovered a city dug by hand in the 7th century BC. Darin Kuyu's underground city was designed to shelter its residents from wars and religious persecution and could house 20,000 people. It had big stone doors to keep intruders out, a clever ventilation system, and well-provided drinking water for everyone. It included a slew of rooms that served as kitchens, beds, and food storage facilities. The city also secured total independence from the outside world by possessing a school, chapel, and cellar for wine and oil production. It also had a sufficient amount of cattle. Antolia's Cappadocia area is rich in volcanic history and stands about 3,300 feet 1,000 meters high on a plateau. Millions of years ago, the land was smothered in ash, making today's lava domes and rough pyramids visible. Sedimentary rock erosion created pocked spires and stone minarets. The subterranean digging would also have a larger purpose, shielding the Hittites from assault. The precise dates are uncertain, although it's believed that the tunnels initially emerged between the 15th and 12th centuries BCE. The Hittites were said to have utilized the tunnels to avoid Phrygian attacks. Orvieto The white wines and charming architecture of the Italian hilltop town of Orvieto are well known, yet its most intriguing attractions are underground. Generations of residents dug deep tunnels under the volcanic rock bluff which the city was initially built beginning with the ancient Etruscans. Over the years, the underground labyrinth that was first excavated to provide wells and cisterns expanded to contain more than 1,200 interconnected tunnels, caves, and galleries. While some rooms seem to have served as wine cellars or pigeon roosts, a popular local delicacy, others included the remains of medieval oil presses and Etruscan-era temples. During periods of unrest, the underground city of Orvieto was regularly used as a hiding spot people were still utilizing certain areas as bomb shelters during World War II. Neors The underground city of Neors in northern France has two miles of tunnels and over 300 manufactured chambers, all concealed 100 feet under a woodland plateau. The location originated as part of a Roman quarry in the 3rd century AD. Still, it developed into an underground hamlet when inhabitants used it as a hiding spot during the Middle Ages' conflicts and invasions. It could house 3,000 people in its heyday and had churches, stables, wells, and bakeries. The Naor's caverns were eventually locked up for decades before reopening as a tourist attraction in the 19th century. During World War I, they were famous tourist destinations, and today, tourists may still witness over 2,000 pieces of graffiti left behind by the Allied troops, many of whom fought nearby during the Battle of the Somme. Beijing Underground City a nuclear paranoia creation, Beijing's underground city of Dixia Chang is a maze of arched, hospital-wide passageways teeming with rubbish, empty iron bed frames, decaying veggies, and curious visitors. Dixia Chang's subterranean universe comprises a network of tunnels and chambers under Beijing that spans 33 square kilometers of underground catacombs. The tunnel complex, also known as the Underground Great Wall, due to its size and military purpose, was excavated by hand by local inhabitants during the 1970s to serve as a refuge against invasions, air assaults, or nuclear bombs. At its peak, more than 90 entrances to the underground passages were concealed in the backs of houses and businesses. Civilians seeking refuge from Soviet bombings in the underground facility would have been protected from boredom and explosives. Classrooms were built for the underground city's children, and at the same time, recreational facilities such as movie theaters, barber shops, restaurants, and a roller skating rink were ready for a prospective influx of refugees. Grain, firearms, and other supplies were stored in chambers in auxiliary tunnels. The underground city also had spaces for producing sunless crops like mushrooms and well drilling. Fortunately, the vast bomb shelter was never utilized for its original purpose, and its presence was forgotten until sections of the tunnel were unveiled as a tourist attraction in 2000. Most of the complex remains closed, with just a few corridors available for visits. Nonetheless, several enterprises have set up shop in the open portions. Edinburgh Vaults Under the streets of Scotland's capital is a gloomy and wet environment from the 18th century. The Edinburgh Vaults, or the South Bridge Vaults, it's a collection of chambers created within the South Bridge's 19 arches. 
The vaults, which were opened in 1788 during considerable development and progress, trace back to a time when Edinburgh was a superstitious town. They still emit a sense of gore and ghastliness now. Originally designed to accommodate taverns, cobblers, cutlers, smelters, and other artisans, as well as to store illegal materials, rumors say serial murders Burke and Hare also kept several remains here they sold for medical experiments. When the companies left, the vaults became a haven for the city's poorest residents, with taverns and brothels strewn throughout the moist chambers. The area is so desolate that it would make any of today's red light districts seem cozy. Dive under Edinburgh's beautiful surface and listen to the guide's chilly anecdotes of the ghosts still roaming the city. Burlington In the case of a Cold War-era nuclear attack, the most important members of the British government would have withdrawn to a 35-acre subterranean complex 100 feet under the hamlet of Corsham. This Burlington bunker, as it was dubbed, was erected in the 1950s using a succession of existing tunnels and stone quarries. It included office spaces, cafeterias, a phone exchange, medical facilities, and sleeping accommodations, all meant to keep the British Prime Minister and 4,000 other critical government workers alive during an emergency. There was also an in-house BBC studio where the PM could address the public. The Burlington facility remained partly operating until 2004, when it was officially dismantled and declassified. Wielichka Salt Mine Poland's Wielichka Salt Mine, often known as the Underground Salt Cathedral, is a giant underground labyrinth of chambers, tunnels, and sculptures on Krakow's outskirts. The location goes back to the 1200s when miners plunged under the Earth's surface in search of rock salt. They gradually dug the mine into a maze of galleries and tunnels that stretched more than 1,000 feet underground throughout the years that followed. When they weren't searching for white gold, the mine's salt crystal resources were utilized to construct a spectacular collection of chapels, chandeliers, sculptures, and base reliefs, including a realistic production of Da Vinci's The Last Supper. After 700 years of operation, the Wielichka mine ceased producing salt in 2007. Although it remains a renowned tourist destination in Poland, it also has a health spa which promotes the medicinal characteristics of the mine's salty atmosphere. And with this, we've come to the end of today's video. Please share your thoughts in the comments section and don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell. Take care.